Imagine a year of your life in which you have no distractions, no laziness, no procrastination. Imagine how many more things you could accomplish if you were going with the twice amount of speed and clarity than what you have right now. Why am I talking about something like this? I've worked with the industry's leading entrepreneurs to help them get rid of brain fog, get rid of lack of motivation, and help them unlock their maximum potential. Look, the main common thing that most entrepreneurs struggle with is what's so-called cheap dopamine, okay? What do I mean by quick dopamine? I mean distractions that are keeping you out of accomplishing your main tasks of the day, okay? So you're trying to do work, you pick your phone, you're distracted. You're trying to do work, you have 10 different tabs open, you're switching through them. It's hard for you to focus 100%. And look, any human being that gets too much pleasure without having to pursue it first, or that overindulges in pleasure for extended periods of time after he's achieved, after he's hunted for the pleasure, after even that he's pursued the pleasure by actually doing stuff, will crash, he will not be able to experience motivation, he will not be able to experience pleasure, he will lack motivation, and he will be lazy. This is how the athletes that go from rags to riches through their exceptional performance in their sport, they achieve greatness, they succeed, they make a ton of money. Usually the same athletes that go ahead and stop performing well because they overindulge in the fruit of their labors, okay? So this is exactly the reason why. Because when we're talking about dopamine, when we're talking about pleasure, between pleasure and pain, there needs to be a very balanced relationship. They always need to be proportional to one another. So pain is usually followed by pleasure. But if pleasure is accomplished, if you experience pleasure without having to pursue with pain, then this can lead into long-term issues. When somebody has a dopamine-seeking behavior, whether that is checking notifications, scrolling, eating sugar, eating junk food, porn, drugs, when he overindulges in those behaviors, he will not be able to experience motivation and he will feel lazy about doing anything at all let alone work. And what is this exactly? This is something called dopamine depletion. Because you're pursuing pleasure or you're overindulging in pleasurable activities for an extended period of time, let's say you're making a bunch of money, you stop pushing, you stop exercising, you stop doing hard work, and you're just in a pleasure mode, this will cause dopamine depletion. So what I'm gonna give you in this video is five steps you can implement ranked from the easiest to the hardest you can use to dopamine detox properly and to avoid crashing, to avoid dopamine depletion so you can actually sustain high levels of motivation, high levels of performance for an extended period of time. And this is how dopamine detox can make you a millionaire. This is what I'm working with when some of my clients come on board and this is exactly what we're using to make sure their dopamine systems fire properly and you avoid long-term problems that will cause you to crash and feel like shit. And so the first step and the easiest step of all is not viewing artificial lights from the hours of 10 p.m. to the hour of 4 a.m. Now, what does this even have to do with dopamine detox? I thought we were gonna talk about drugs, porn, no. So this is one of the most important aspects of your dopamine system. Now, anything I'm saying, anything and everything here is covered from research because I've actually researched those things to make this video here, to assemble the data to make this video. Otherwise, I would be talking stuff out of my hole. So why should you even consider not viewing light from 10 to 4? Because it blocks the release of dopamine from a structure in your brain called the habenula. And so what happens essentially is you block the release of dopamine from any activity, whether that is training, whether that is eating a meal after being so hungry, whether that is completing a milestone with your work, you're punishing yourself for viewing light in the hours of 10 to 4. What should you do instead? Three, four hours before bed, dim the lights. Below eye level, this is very important, below eye level, fire light colors that are dimmable. For example, here and here I have two Philips Hue lights that are dimmable. I can use my phone and dim them down. Let me show you the example. So I have this, right? And if I click here, I can dim it down, but I also can put this into the fire light colors, red, orange, yellow. And so this is exactly what you wanna be doing to avoid that. Because you're simply punishing yourself for viewing light at those times. And this will help you not block dopamine release, feel more motivated the next day. Okay, so that's step one, really easy, really self-explanatory. Step two is an activity that is a bit harder. Again, it's easy, 
but a bit harder than step number one. And it's doing something that replenishes your dopamine stores every single day. And this something is called NSDR. Andrew Huberman talks to this about a lot. There has been a ton of research done about this in terms of how it works with your dopamine. It's called non-sleep deep rest. So what it is exactly is you're closing your eyes, you're shutting your eyes while you're laying down before bed, ideally. And what you're doing is you're doing a self-scan with your brain you're essentially scanning your whole body, you're self-diverting your attention. And by doing so, not only you're replenishing your dopamine baseline levels, it's like you're putting a bucket and you're filling the tank because your dopamine levels are resembled from a tank. They're refillable, but they're also drainable. So what you're doing is you're taking a bucket of water and you're putting it in the tank. This is what it does. But it also shuts off your thoughts. So if you have an issue with ruminating thoughts, your mind is racing, you can go to bed. This actually turns off the thoughts and you're self-diverting your attention to your body, yourself. And as a result, you're able to acquire much better sleep. So this is step two. Let's go on to analyze. Step number three is a bit harder than step number two, but you should do this every single day. And it is do something physically or mentally hard every day. Now, whether that is going to be exercise, lifting weights, running, cold showers, speaking in a podium, social speaking, or fasting. Now, those things are mentally or physically hard. Now, why should you even do that? Is it because it's a quick win? Is it because you're putting yourself in tough situations? How does it work? This specifically trains some parts of your brain, which are parts of your willpower muscle. Okay, so when we're thinking about your willpower and self-discipline, you actually have a few muscles to train to become better at self-discipline and willpower. One of the muscles is called the anterior mid-cingulate cortex. Okay, this is a pretty wordy sentence. Like think about doing a bicep rep. You're training your biceps. Every bicep curl is a rep and it grows your bicep. This AMC, which is the anterior mid-cingulate cortex, whenever you're doing something you don't want to do, it's like doing a rep and it grows. It gets bigger and thus your ability to do stuff you hate, your willpower, your grit gets bigger. And here's the thing. This part of your brain is smaller in obese people. It gets bigger when they diet and it's extremely big in athletes and it's extremely, extremely big in people that feel that they're challenged and have overcome some challenge. And it's also big in people that live for many years and it stays big for those people that live many years and it's associated not only to be the willpower muscle but your skill your muscle a sign that you want to live it stays large if you have a will to live so it's your willpower muscle but also your will to live by the way i'm explaining why doing something physically hard or mentally hard every day part one is the anterior mid cingulate cortex that grows every time you do something you don't want to do that is hard okay now you might love cold showers, you might love running, then this defeats the purpose. You might love exercising, this defeats the purpose, you're not getting the benefit. So it's really important to do things you hate doing and that are also hard. Why? Because here's the thing, besides the anterior mid cingulate cortex, we also have the basal ganglia. Now this is a structure in the middle of your brain and there are some certain circuits that control your voluntary movements. So whenever now I'm moving my hands, it's controlled by my basal ganglia. I want to have a sip of coffee, controlled by my basal ganglia. I want to type something in my keyboard, basal ganglia. So you have two types of circuitry in that part. You have the go, which is something like you press and go in the keyboard and the character walks. And it's also the no-go circuitry. So this is the brake and the gas pedal. Essentially, the go is activated whenever you're doing something, whenever you're partaking in a voluntary movement. You're moving your head. It's easy, right? This part of your willpower muscle is pretty strong in most people because most people, if you think about this, you're flowing wherever the wind blows. You're waking up, kind of checking your phone, going to make a coffee. You're doing stuff. Okay, whatever your mind brings, you're executing. And it's not very bad, but here's the thing. If you want to be able to control your ability to not overindulge, which is the whole point of this video, is to not overindulge, even in your fruits of your labor, because that's gonna make you feel lazy and crash. This is the skill you need to develop if you want to control yourself to not overindulge. This is like step three is extremely important. Why? Because the no-go part of the brain is a part of the brain that is usually not very trained in people. So usually what you have 
let's say this is a scale, old fashioned scale. Like, you know, the side that is heaviest makes the scale talk like this. So let's say this is the go and this is the no go for most people. So what you want to have is this, a balance, a balance between the two, because that is going to resemble the balance in between you actually having the pain and pleasure relationship, which needs to be equal. So how do you trigger? Because it's really important for that no-go part of the brain to be triggered daily, every day. It's like a muscle. It's like the anterior mid cingulate cortex that you have to train every single day. Otherwise, it's going to get smaller. It's not going to work. You need consistency. You need to maintain it. So how do you train it? The actionable thing you need to do here for the no-go circuit of the brain is actively refrain from doing things you would otherwise impulsively do. What does that even mean? Now, the way to trigger that part of the brain, the no-go, the brake, not the gas pedal, is by actively stopping yourself from doing what your mind wants to do impulsively. You need to have specific moments of the day that you're activating that. Let's say I'm working right now. I'm working because I'm filming this video. Now, in the back of my mind, I receive a thought, which is, oh, shit, I forgot to post a story yesterday. Or how many responses did I get? Did I get any leads? Let me check that real quick. So let's say I have the urge to do that, given that I'm already pretty addicted to my phone. So let's say I have this thought, boom, pops up. What you need to do is to say no and refrain from doing that. And this is a wrap. Again, remember about the bicep curls we did before with the anterior mid cingulate cortex by doing things you don't want to do? Here, what you're doing is pretty much the opposite. You're actively holding yourself from doing impulsive things. And every single repetition will make that part. You remember the scale? This will rebalance the scale. However, Here's the thing, when you first start implementing this exercise, it will be hard in the beginning. Similar to when you go to the gym and you start doing squats, the first rep will suck, you will be tired. And this is simply because your energy, your battery, every time you actively refrain from doing a thing, every time you're actively self-denying in doing something impulsive, it will drain a bit of your energy. However, as you get stronger and stronger and stronger, it will require much less energy, right? Similar to a squat, similar to a bicep curl. The 135th time that you do the bicep curl, you're stronger, it's easier, to, you can do more weight. So simply like this, you will be more able to control your urges, you will be more able to say no to the impulsive things, like scratching your head, picking your nose, checking your phone. Ultimately, you will be able to leverage that state of focus and self-discipline to bigger things, to your work, to your life, to become more successful to scaling. Okay, so two things here in the step three, again, anterior mid cingulate cortex, doing something you don't wanna do, you don't like doing, and also training the no-go part of the brain. And how do you do the no-go? Again, let me summarize by saying, you have to have specific moments every single day that you're actively refraining from doing impulsive things. Usually with my clients, I start with five no-go moments of the day, but we go to 10, 15, 20, and you have to find a sweet spot that you're doing that consistently every day. And it can be like, for example, if you wake up in the morning and you actively refrain from checking your phone, that's one moment. When you are doing work, when you set yourself to do a 90 minute or an hour work of deep focus session block, and you're in that time block, you're not allowing yourself to check your phone. Let's say you have a thought, let me check my phone. No second rep. So you have 15 of those, 20 of those a day, and you're actively training that part of the brain, which is extremely important. Step number four. Now here we're going to the harder things. Here we're going from the easiest to the hardest. Step four is borderline hard, which is to do boring things every day. Okay, do something boring every day. For example, I train without music every day. And trust me, it is the most boring thing I am doing in my day. But guess what? In this moment, I am not stacking multiple sources of dopamine. And so the idea is to let your dopamine baseline be as stable as possible. However, because of working out is already a stimulating activity, it will increase your dopamine levels. It will do so without stacking like multiple different sources. So let's say coffee, music, pre-workout and gym, there are like five different dopamine sources all at once. Okay, so what's happening because that remember that I told you before that your dopamine levels are like a tank, which is replenishable, but also drainable. 
it can empty. Well, what happens is when you experience big peaks in dopamine, then it's like you're shaking the gas without a top and the water flows out of the gas tank. And what happens, your dopamine baseline drops. But when you do boring things, like you're going on a long walk without music, you're completing work without music, you're training without music, then you're making sure that dopamine baseline is stable. Like for example, with me, whenever I'm training without music, whenever I go and do work, which is something that is much more fun nowadays because I train in the morning and I do the hardest thing, most boring thing without music. And now our long training lags brutal without music. It's boring, it's killing me. But whenever I go to my office and trying to do work, I'm much more creative, much more driven. So this is step number four. It's kind of hard, but do boring things every day. Step number five and the hardest thing to do, but the most beneficial is no phone in the first hour of waking up. Now, you might notice something here. You might notice a pattern, which is all of those things combine with one another. For example, if you do the no phone in the first hour of waking up, you will actually get the no goes. You will actually do something you don't want to do. And you will actually refrain in doing something impulsive that you are doing. So why is it important? All the four steps that I mentioned in before are different habits that you want to ingrain in your lifestyle. Now, humans, have this ability to form different patterns and habits through something called neuroplasticity. And here is the holy grail. So neuroplasticity is your brain essentially is very easy and capable to form different habits by the stimulus, okay, through experience. And this is happening in wakefulness. It gets triggered when you're awake, when you experience stuff. So you're able to form different habits. Humans are the only species that are able to do that. Neuroplasticity is something that takes place while you're sleeping. So while you're sleeping, you, while you're in REM sleep, your brain sorts out all of the different files, sees the experiences you had in the day, if they were actually severe, and it's essentially removing the emotional attachment from things and putting them into a shelf so you can actually have good memory. You're able to use that neuroplasticity when you wake up. So think about it like this. When you're asleep, your brain sorts all the files, starts searching for new drivers to download, the updated drivers to use the next day, right? For better memory, better performance, more sharpness, more emotional balance. And when you wake up in the morning, your brain is ready to click all the files and press download, right? So you're in the perfect place to start receiving all the downloads your brain processed throughout the night. However, when you wake up and the first thing you do is you open your computer and you expose your eyes to so much information you have to process, you're missing out on all of the stuff you could have downloaded and therefore improving your neuroplasticity. Okay, this is why this will make you feel more foggy, more stressed, more emotionally unbalanced and less driven because you are sabotaging your ability to use neuroplasticity and do all of the steps above, which is no lights, do NSDR, mentally and physically hard things every day. All of those are habits that you can ingrain in your system through neuroplasticity. And the fifth step, which is no phone in the first hour of waking up, will help you ingrain those habits. Plus, it will give you the no-go benefit. It will provide you with solitude. You can actually sit down with your thoughts and not be distracted for an hour of the day. And trust me, nothing bad will happen. You can try this. I'm sure nothing bad will happen in that hour. I mean, think about it. What's the worst thing that can happen in terms of your business if you don't check your phone or your emails or your client messages in that first hour of waking up? Right? It's not there in the world. So I hope this video was insightful. The five steps to properly dopamine detox and how dopamine detox can make you a millionaire and why. So again, I want you to picture a period of your life that you have zero distractions, that you have no lazy feelings, you're motivated, you're clear in your path, you have the right business plan, but you also have the mental capacity and state to accomplish the goals. Have you imagined what's possible in that state? Well, if you follow those five steps, you will not only imagine what it's like, but you will also experience the feeling of accomplishing everything in your way. Then nothing is gonna be stopping you at this point, okay? Because let's face it, if you're running an online business, you are addicted to your devices because it's you can't really detach your work from your place, from your relaxation, from your social media, from anything. And so this is gonna equip you with what you need. So if you're interested in finding out, because that's exactly what I've been helping all of my clients do, I've been helping them optimize their health, leveraging data, and also restructuring and reforming their habits so they can master their self-discipline and willpower so that they're able to 
scalar businesses to multiple six figures to seven figures, okay, as a result of achieving peak performance. So if you're interested in doing something similar and maximizing your potential as an entrepreneur so you can scale, what you need to do is click the Calendly link down below the video and book a call with me. And I'm going to walk you through exactly the steps that we need to follow to achieve this together. That being said, nothing else to say. That was a pretty long video, but I hope I'll see you on the next one. Take care.